Hey guys, Edgeward here, back again with a Morgra the Shadow Gave campaign in Total War Warhammer 3 using SFO. This is part 4, last time we took Castle Carcassonne, created a hearthstone from it, and then defeated the Fey Enchantress in a very one-sided battle, because we decided to be a cheese lord. Anyway, last time we built this building so we can get some Razor Gorge. And get some on gorge, and then our hearthstone's about to be finished, so we can recruit gorge next turn as well. We are beating the crap of our army uh, to make sure that they have a little rage in them, make them nice and angry. Uh, so let's end the turn and get ready to go. Already new turn. Morgor here is going to continue his movement up to Brion. We now have this new building. So we're going to have plenty of things that we can now recruit. Let's have a look at our recruit pool. From Morgor himself, we are going to get some Razor Gorge. And I think I might grab the Hounds of Pestilence over these Beastman War Herds. War Hounds, I keep calling them War Herds. Let's just merge everything. If you press Control A, you can select everything and then press Control M to quickly merge them. Let's get rid of... The, let's get rid of these ones to make enough space. So two razor gore herds, get the pounds of pestilence. And we want to get rid of both of these. Uh to replace them with the hounds of pestilence. Get two gore herds in here. We already have a razor gore chariot, so I don't think we really need the tusk gore chariot. Let's get a squad of harpies. Arby's are very good at fighting on walls and taking range units to make sure that you're not firing on us. So that will be us for this turn. Let us end the turn and continue on. So during the end turn there, I noticed that there was some sparks came up Brion. That normally happens when someone wins a battle. So are they fighting someone else? They're fighting the orcs. So the orcs must have destroyed the army that came out. Or they defeated the orcs. I don't know. It wasn't that big of an army that came out, so... Uh, Brion is max level now. So it should be a somewhat decent fight to show off our new units. Let's do this. We got the Savage Blow, so everyone's got plus 20 to all their charge bonuses. Great for us, because we are a very charge-heavy army. With our flanking and just straight-up ambush tactics. So let's go into Brion and see what we can do. Yeah, this should be a decisive victory. It's going to be quite an easy victory, but I do want to show off our new units. See what they're looking like. So let's do a cinematic battle for this one. The Battle of Brion. Alrighty, let's get this cinematic battle starting up and paused right at the start here because we're going to attack instantly. We're going to have a look at our new units first. Let's have a look at our harpies. Winged Twilight Hunters that are ready to just eat and demolish anything they see. They are absolutely devastating looking and they rip people apart. Over here we have our Centigorge. And uh, over here we have our new Tuscore units. These are the things that the Tuscore Chariot has been being pulled around by. But these are just a wild pack that are going to go in and go absolutely crazy destroying anything they see. They believe they have a bit of armor as well. Uh, they also have bleed, so as soon as they hit a unit, it's also going to get a, a damage over time put on them. They have fear, which is great. And the beastal pack tactics, it was going to affect enemies while they're in melee. So giving them a minus 10 speed and a minus 10 bonus to charge, pretty good. They also have monster presence, which is going to give allies around them a figure loss uh is gonna reduce so we can run our whole army have them sitting beside the monsters and they are gonna be like okay we need to catch our breath because these things are gonna chase us down and murder us of course we have saswell over here the gore bull absolute beast he's still bigger than the chaos bot we have sla still need to change your name sla they are brasham and of course morger himself Ready for war with his aura of foul transmutation around him. Lastly, one of the newer units that we now have are the Gore Herd. 
So unlike the Ungors, we actually have some horns. We're finally making it up in the ranks to the better units in the Beastmen roster. I do love the gore units in my Beast of Chaos army for Age of Sigmar. I have about 40 gores. Uh, 20 of them are painted kind of just like this. Normal gores, and then I have another 20 painted as sand gores. And of course we have our ungore squads ready to go. So let's look at the deployment for this battle. I have our... Oh, I haven't shown off the hounds. Our hounds of pestilence. Our Nurgle brethren hounds. These guys have regeneration, they have terror, they are very fast, they do lots of damage, I believe they give poison as well. Uh, why? Why is it just decided that it's not going to show me my info box anymore? I don't know, it is what it is. Anyway, these guys look amazing, they're going to be able to run down enemies, uh, definitely an upgrade over just the normal beastmen warherds, hounds, I keep calling them warherds, I'm never going to stop calling them warherds. Anyway, let's look at the deployment. So right over here in the main center, we got all our monsters and our Razor Gore herd sitting here, ready to push right up into the middle. We have our Razor Gore chariots ready to come in and hit some peasant bowmen. Over here, I've hit this flank quite heavy, hoping to hit this flank, push into the center. We've got all our squads of Ungors to try and tie up the enemy while our Gores go around and do a lot of damage on the flank. We have our hounds up here. They're going to come in from the back, destroy these peasants, the bowmen, and the normal mobs. And lastly, our centigores over here are going to come in from this angle. So pretty much every angle, except for back here, is going to be completely destroyed by our charges. So let's get this battle going. Instantly, all our gores and ungores are straight up just running in. They all have stocks. They haven't been seen just yet. Now they've been seen. The enemy's running away from them. They're going to push up and try to set up flanking. Over here, our hounds of pestilence are coming in, and our centigores have moved up, ready to go in. They have some pikemen here trying to stop us, so we're going to move around them. Finally, our ungores have hit the peasant mobs, and uh, we're setting up, holding the enemy back. Uh, this squad hit them to try and hold them back, but then they actually outflanked us and got one of these Ungor units completely stuck in the middle here. The squad of Ungors set up ready to hit these peasants in the back, and our normal Gors, they're pushing in, going straight for the peasant bowmen. The squad is ready to get commanded. I just haven't cut it yet. So anyway, they are setting up there. This squad's going to come down here. This squad's attacking the peasant bowmen here. They're firing onto our Tuskor jar. Tuskor... Yeah, just Tuskors. Uh, coming in here, we got a me, mes, ne, me, 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 me. Yeah, I can say English words. Uh, in here, and our chaos spawn are just letting loose, ripping never hang apart. And our hounds of peasants, they've already got into the peasant bowmen, ripping them apart. They are huge monsters. They're bigger than peasants themselves. This one over here into the peasant mob, just destroyed everything. Let's see, how's this flank going here? Yep, these gores are holding back a tide of beastmen. Let's just watch them as they, their dual axes just start ripping these peasants apart. Yeah. Alrighty, then our ungore herds have moved over here to stop this catapult from firing. The chaos spawn over here and the razor gores are just ripping things apart. Uh, this side, that where they outflanked us, I then took our units and outflanked them again get a nice charge in their back our harpies are then going to come in here this unit routed and they came back so the harpies came down here to stop them from coming back the terror that they have terror or fear can't remember which one it was instantly routed that unit uh where is morger morger yes morger has spent this whole battle standing here beating the crap out of the spearman unit don't know why they didn't rout sooner he's got so many leadership debuffs but he just had a good old time Sitting here, beating peasants up. Ooh, a headbutt. What else we got? We got a headbutt. We got a slap. Hell yeah. Over here, Sla has been casting spells this whole battle. Just the Mystifying Vasma until he gets some better spells. At this point, everyone is routing except for this unit. The Harpies hit them. They routed. Then the Harpies came off them. And then they came back again. So I they got the Harpies in. I got the Rayscore Chariots in. To make sure that they are completely broken this time at this point 
The whole battle has chain routed and we have won this battle. I don't need to run them down because this is in fact a settlement battle so we don't need to. But a good look at what our new units can do. Pretty much our gores are just ungores but better. Our razor gores are walking monster tanks that are not going to take too much damage. Our harpies doing that fear and terror destroying enemies from the sky. Already quite an easy battle to start us off. You can see our gores did a lot of damage. This one doing a lot more damage. This one ungore unit has really proven themselves. They were fighting, I think, two different peasant mobs during the battle. So they got a lot of damage. Our pestilent hounds, our hounds of pestilence, that's their name. They were able to break enemies quite quick with their terror. They've got regeneration as well, so they didn't take any damage whatsoever. Then they were able to chase the enemy down. Our spawn did what they did, and our harpies came in and were hitting people in the back, stopping them from running away. Plus, they also have terror, so that minus 10 leadership is really good on them. Really good for having them hit something straight in the back and making them route almost instantly. So for this, I ain't gonna take the money because I do want to get buildings, and that beast of rage is quite good, so let's loot and raise Brion. Okay, let's start leveling up Morgur and Slaw. Uh, Morgur, get that. This whole army's gonna get plus 10 weapons. I kinda wanna look at what weapon strength we're getting. So, Chaos Bond, 225. Gore Beasts, or Gore Herds, 40. And the Risk Guard, 65. So, 225, 40, 65. What does that do for us? So, Gore Herds. <coughs> gore Herds have went up for damage these have went up quite a bit and the chaos spawn have went up by 25 ish so not super loads but it's enough it'll be really good whenever we get big monsters like gorgons into this army uh because it is a 10 percent bonus when they have a higher weapon strength to begin with it's gonna shoot up even further so sla here we're gonna give you the penundral pendulum this is a great spell Gonna do lots of damage. Going to hidden encampment, and we're gonna head towards the wood elves. Not declare war just yet. Okay. So what is in our blood round right now? We have Quinelle, 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 and the King's Glade. So these are gonna be our targets. King's Glade seems to have an outpost in it from Carcassonne themselves. Have I not destroyed Carcassonne? Have they got a settlement left? Nope, they have none left, so they have the Fan Chantress hiding somewhere. Some lord somewhere. Do they want peace? Of course they don't. So they should be destroyed soon. We don't want to perform the ritual just yet. Thank you very much. Uh, let's have a look here. I think we're going to keep our money. So our army's looking pretty good now. I kind of want to go for another harpy unit, but I don't know what to get rid of. This Ungor Spearman hurt. They did really well in that last battle. They've just destroyed peasant mobs left and right, so they had quite a lot of good feeding. But I think that'll be us, and I think we're going to end the turn here and move on. Let's do it. So, during the end turn, it looks like Orion has decided he wants to declare war on us before we can declare war on him. That's okay. I, the only thing I'm scared of is him instantly being able to take Castle Carcassonne. But I hope he doesn't have enough movement range for that. We will see. Yep, he is. So we have just lost all our ritual power. That's not how we wanted it to go, but it is what it is. We, If we fight this, we might be able to destroy maybe one Glade Guard unit. I don't know if it's really worth fighting. So I think we're just going to auto-resolve it for now. We did get some dread out of it, so that'll help. Did Carcassonne just take this place back? I think they did. We can raise the herdstone there then. And then and hopefully we'll be able to get Orion in an ambush and stop all his archers from being able to do anything. 
So Whispers of the Eye, this is the thing that comes in with SFO. It's going to get rid of our research rate by 20% and our misband chance by 20% for all casters. But down the line, it might do something. It might give us some bonuses. But uh, I've never actually did it the whole way through, so let's try it. I hear them. I hear the Dark Gods. I hear them. Let's see what A that does that later on. Issued. Mighty Lord, a great adventure beckons. Be wary, though, for while the potential rewards are great, so too are the perils. Alrighty, we've been issued our first Lord quest. This one is for the Stave of Ruinous Corruption for Morgur. Never read it this. Wherever the Shadow Gave treads a dark tide of ravity madness and mutagenic power corrupts and changes all those around him. Whether friend... Or foe. Containing the essence of chaos that trails the master of skulls is beyond the capability of any mortal means. And even to Morgor himself. No. To harness this power requires rituals with totems made with made from liberally can't say the word obtained materials, orc spines, dwarven skulls, and most burdensome of all, a stolen waystone of the Azrai. Morgur's travels has seen him cross paths with such items. Thus, he needs only to return him. Thus, he needs only to return to his lair to begin the foul ritual. The insidious elves, however, have not taken too kindly to his perfectly pilfering and are never far behind. One day, I'll be good enough to read without uh, messing up. So, he his uh, quest item is the stave of ruinous corruption. Imbued with the quiddly of rune, Morgor's gnarled staff summons deadly chaos spawn to do his bidding on the battlefield. It's also going to give us plus two chaos spawn capacity, summon chaos spawn in battle, give him magical attacks, and plus ten melee attacks. Uh, I think we might have to wait on this one because his army's it's not great, but it's decent. But they will have reinforcements. So we'll do this quest battle later on. We got a trait because we were in ambush to get a bit more ambush success chance. Carcass on here has taken Brion, as I said, so we're going to take it back again. Turn it into a herdstone because Orion decided to, to destroy uh, our other herdstone. And he shouldn't be able to reach Brion in one turn, so we should be able to ambush him, hopefully. So let's go in and fight this battle. We don't even need to fight this battle, it is just an auto resolve, so we're just gonna take that. Raise the herdstone. You don't know uh, with the herdstone shards if you your single herdstone that you have that you've built with your herdstone shard if it gets destroyed, I believe you get the herdstone shard back to make another one. Alright, Adrian's uh Carcassonne has finally been defeated. They are gone, we don't have to deal with them anymore. Which is great. We got some money now. We can build one of these if we want. But I kind of want to just keep the money and upgrade till we get the Beast of Gore Herd. Or upgrade to this. We might need to continue getting growth. Does anything here increase our growth? Yes, the metallic remains. <clears throat> Sorry about that. The metallic remains gives us plus one growth for all armies. So we might want to go for it as early as possible to get the growth going so yeah let's take it um with his army being mostly archers i feel like our army is fine enough uh they does have quite a bit of spears in there though uh, and morgur and saswell is gonna have to work together to kill orion himself because he is quite strong so let's just upgrade here give morgur the blood rust this is an ability he, for him, increasing his base weapon damage by 25, his armor piercing, piercing weapon damage by 25, and his melee attack by 5, so we'll take that. Uh, and so as well here, you're just going to continue on the yellow line. We've got to take... As much as I want to upgrade you right now, I think I'm going to take him for foe. Uh, this way, if Orion is in melee with Morgurt, we can cast this on him get rid of a lot of his attack and defense. It'll be good to get rid of him quicker. 
We don't need another harpy unit. We can probably start just merging these. I'll get you back, get you back. Um, where can I make gores? Can't make gores here yet because of that. Uh, oh, this is a better herdstone because it's actually going to give us a bit more research rate. Not that bad. So let's do that and in the turn, let's have a look at the rewards of dread. Do we want to hang upgrades? The horde armies are raised at level two. Don't really care. Don't really care about that. Unit caps. We don't really care about. I could get some more razor gore herd or some more hounds of pestilence, but honestly, with the center gores there, we don't need more cav. And the Razor Gore Gird herd, they're not as good as the Chaos Bomb for being tanks. Uh, well, I mean, they're, they're more tankier than the Chaos Bomb, but they do have regeneration. So I feel like Chaos Bomb are still better. So for now... Ooh. Wait a minute, I didn't know this was a thing. This must be a new thing in SFO. Normally, only the Orcs have upgrades like this. So our monsters... Or is it just Chaos Bomb? Oh, I remember at the start of the campaign, it actually said about these unit upgrades. So we could spend money to upgrade this single unit. Give them some cooler stuff. Um, Cloud of Flies, that looks like something I want. We're going to go with it and put this on them. They're going to lose a bit of melee defense, but their melee defense is already trash, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it's going to give enemies around the minus 8 melee attack and be doing damage to them. So I might go with that once we get the money for that. So I think now I'm just going to end the turn and continue on. Alrighty. Next turn, Orion has done exactly what I think he's going to do. He's going to move all the way up to us. They do, or they do. You know what I mean. Anyway, they're in a stance called the Forest Calls. Oh, this must be a new SFO one. Uh, they, it's going to get rid of 20% of their campaign. They're going to have a lot of figure loss reduction. Like the line of sight is going to go up, but all their units, when they have 75% or higher HP, are going to have plus 25 base damage. Damn. That's quite powerful. They're taking a lot of attrition from Chaos, which is great for us. So I think what we do is go straight in, see if we can ambush him, see what kind of fight we can get. Nothing here is going to be good for us. Yeah, I definitely want to save up 10k to get that for our wizard. Which, by the way, don't want to keep calling him slow. We got shots full. Let's call him. What shall we call this guy right here? Let's call him. Lornell. Lornell the Bray Shaman. Alright, so we got Sazville and we got Lornell here. And Morgar. Let's see if we can get the ambush. We did get the ambush. It's going to be a Pyrrhic victory. It's going to be quite a hard battle. Uh, Orion himself, very, very strong. The Wild Riders, extremely strong. Uh, Cav, rest of it. I mean, they're pretty good in melee. They're pretty good, so they will be able to fight back, but with the ambush, we should be able to get them. So let's start up a cinematic battle for this one. I would do a normal battle for this one just to show you how to do an ambush, but this is going to be so epic that I need to do a cinematic. So I'll catch you in that one. Let's go. Alrighty, the ambush to end all ambushes. We have set up our RB like so. We got Morgur, Sazful, and the Bray Shaman Lornel ready to cast spells on Orion and attack him straight from the get go. We have our Gore Herd. Everything's going to move up here, try and distract these Eternal Guard and all these archers. While in the back, we have our Chaos Bond is going to hit into the archers, and our Centagore is going to hit the archers. Our Harpies here are going to go for the Wild Riders. I also have our Hounds here. Because of the regeneration, they should be able to heal up the damage they take. They're going to go into the Wild Riders as well. We have the Razor Gore Herds. They're going to go in the Wild Riders. Just hold them all up and stop them from doing damage to our main bulk of the army. So let's start this battle up and see how it goes. 
Instantly, we're going straight for them. The enemy spotted us, started shooting spells. We've cast our spell on Orion to get rid of his melee attacks. Sazzle's gonna go straight into him, try to attack him. Over here, our gore hurts have got into the combat. There's just fighting breaking out everywhere. Over here, they've just casted a spell in AoE while our chaos spawn are doing a lot of damage. All the wild riders have been caught up by our harpies and our hounds. Over here, Orion is just beating the absolute crap out of Sazville. Sazville's already at half HP, below half HP, and he's getting destroyed. Morgan's going to come in to help him, but Sazville is going to route maybe two or three hits before he runs away. Our Shires are going to come up here and get these archers who are running away, and our spawn's going to come and help. Over here, these Eternal Guard are holding the line against our gorge, which is okay. We just want to hold them there while we do deal with all the archers and then come down, flank them, hit them in the back. Our Chaos spawn over here are doing the same thing. These wild riders over here are just completely surrounded, but yet they're dealing lots of damage to us. We're holding the Eternal Guard at bay. Let's go over and look at Morgor fighting Orion. Quite an epic battle. The Morgor is getting hit in the back by Eternal Guard. The elves are not playing fair. That doesn't matter. What's this on Orion? Orion's got hit by the people in full once again, so his melee attack's down to 55. 55, and he's still doing lots of damage. Morgus took so much damage that even he is routed. He's running away. Sanswell's just recovered. Our Chaos Spawn here are taking out the archers up here. Uh, these Centaurs came in the back, completely routed this whole area from just one charge alone. This side of the army is completely broken. All the Wild Riders are completely broken. I'm now sending out Ungor hordes to chase down enemies make sure that they don't come back orion is just shooting at morker trying to kill him take him off the field and now he's going for lornel which oh, one more hit like that and lornel might drop i've got sazo coming back to try and protect him lornel running away casting another spell on him another mystifying miasma this time not the not the debuff i realize that i'm not doing enough damage to him so we're gonna do that one of the Eternal Guard units completely de destroyed, and Morgor's, uh, yep, the Spirit Essence of Chaos turned them into a Chaos Spawn, so I'm going to use the Chaos Spawn, spawn from his units to fight him in spite, do some damage to him. Morgor's going to come in now, I'm just surrounding, everyone in their army is now broken and running away. Most are shattered. Uh, this hero, yo, oh, they're completely shattered now. Orion is unbreakable, so I have surrounded him with models to have him attack the tiny dudes while Morgor and the Chaos Spawn do the damage. And there he goes. Orion has fallen. A victory for the Beastmen. At this point, we're gonna just start chasing the enemy down. We got our Senegors chasing enemies, our Harpies chasing enemies. Just running around trying to kill anything on the field to make sure they don't come back. We have our reinforcements from the Hearthstone. They didn't even do anything. They weren't able to get here fast enough before the battle was over. Our Hounds of Pestilence chasing the Deepwood Scouts. And another one chasing Eternal Guard and Glade Guard. This Centagore units over here is going to take out these Glade Guard. But yeah, we have won the battle. We took a lot of damage doing it, but it was quite the ambush. Let's fast forward until the end of this battle. Yep, what's really left here is just this hero. He is getting surrounded by every unit that we can throw at him. Um, to get the damage done quicker, I should have just had Morgor on him, but I did want to keep bodies on him because he is faster than Morgor, so he could have run away. So doing this kind of stops him from being able to move. There goes that Chaos Bond unit. Rest in peace to them, Eternal Guard that got turned into them. Anyway, there we go. That is a close victory. A lot better than I was expecting when fighting Orion, but uh, it is what it is. And we won. That's what matters. Well, that battle went better than expected. We did take a lot of damage on Morgor. Sazville nearly died, and our British Shaman nearly died. But no units actually died in that battle. Obviously, as I said, the problems were Orion himself and the Cav. Everything else was able to be dealt with quite easily. Uh, some of these internal guard took a while to break, and they were able to break some of our Ungors. 
But that didn't matter because we were able to kill them in the end. So, um, our Bray Shaman kept casting the 45 attack and defense debuff on Orion, and he still was able to kill Sazful in mere free hits. Well, not kill him, do a lot of damage. Uh, Morgor did a lot of damage back to him, but in the end, we just had to put a Mystify Miasma on him, do a bit more damage, and one then just stack loads of bodies on him so he wasn't hitting our lords, uh, he was just hitting our chaff, and we finished him doing all the damage. So we're going to get a load of money, a load of replenishment, a load of rage. I ain't going to take the money for now. Uh, but other than that, it was quite a good battle. Let's sacrifice them. And we got the trait. We're defeating Orion. Plus four leadership. Plus four. Plus five magic. Uh, during uh, force battles. That one is for the hero. Uh, which is Morgur. And then the whole army gets plus four during forest battles and plus 10 melee attack i think like this one's for the lord's army it doesn't say but it has the red icon but yeah quite a win what is that one called it's called wild hunter nice morgan's starting to get some nice traits let's go in and start leveling him up okay let's finish up this thing let's just go primal instincts he's got that Voice of the Dark Gods don't really need it. Mm. Mm. Speed for the whole army and figure loss reduction. It's good for long winded battles. These men don't really have long winded battles. We either do lots of damage, kill them, or they do lots of damage to kill us. So, you know what? No, we're just going to give him more melee defense. He certainly needs it after showing what Orion did to him. Uh, what does he have? He has the, yeah, the speed and that. Um, uh, yeah, we don't really have much magic items or auxiliaries, it, but it is what it is. We're gonna go over here and just destroy this army. Get rid of them for good. Hit about to resolve that. Uh, oh, the money. We'll take the money. Let's go into Hidden Encampment and let's head back into Brion. Get more replenishment because we need it. Uh, traits coming up again. I think that is because I press escape and it just resets. Don't know why. It is what it is. Gorbul. Let's give you, yeah, more defense and more HP. We'll go more HP first. I feel like foe helped us quite a bit there, but the upgraded version gives us base weapon damage going down as well. That would be quite helpful. I don't think we're going to be fighting a big lord like that for a while, so we're just going to take another Penodial Pendulum. And do we want to build anything that's built? Do we care about Centigores that much? Not really. I think we just get the Gores. So actually, I want to save the money for the item. So let's maybe not upgrade them for now. Let's just keep getting growth. Okay. Alright guys, well this is going to be the end of the episode, I hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you want to see more content of Morgur the Shadow Gave destroying the old world, I'll catch you next time, peace.